Moses experienced the presence of the living God. Therein he was transformed. His face shone. He smiled broadly. Light shone round about him. Everyone noticed the difference. There was a radiance about Moses after he had talked with God. In Hebrew, his radiance is called Shekinah, or divine presence. The question raised by our text is the question of radiance. Are we going to let our light so shine before others that they will be led to faith? The question is not, how much light do you have? but will you let your light shine? The, the child's song about light raises the question simply but beautifully. This little light of mine, I am going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Before we look more closely at the implications of letting our light shine before other people, let us look at Moses' radiance and the radiance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Moses and Jesus. Why did Moses smile so broadly and shine so brightly? He'd been in the presence of God. He'd received the Ten Commandments, a law by which the people could live. Moses had talked with God. His face was aglow as recorded in our Hebrew scriptures reading for today because he had been with the God of glory. Moses had experienced the glory of God. Now that glory was part of him. The root word for glory can mean either horns or light. Some artist of the Middle Ages painted Moses with horns on his head. Michelangelo picked up the mistake in his famous statue of Moses. Instead of a halo, Michelangelo gave Moses horns. Light, not horns, emanated from Moses' head. The angelic glow of Moses' face was so mysterious that Moses had to cover his face as he talked with the people. He had fasted for 40 days and nights while on the mountain with God. Now, as he re-entered ordinary life, Moses shone with God's glory. This shining was even more apparent in Jesus' transfiguration as he recorded, as recorded in our gospel reading. In this story of Jesus' transfiguration, we have the key to transformation. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Verse 8. In its original context, this phrase meant that Moses, standing for the law, and Elijah, standing for the prophets, had disappeared. Peter and James and John saw only Jesus. They saw him in all his glory. These three apostles were transformed because all distractions were removed. For us, this focus on Jesus only with no distractions also results in transformation. We have this treasure of divine light. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4, Paul picks up the theme of the light of Christ shining through common Christians. The Living Bible paraphrase of this reading is enlightening. Since we know that this new glory will never go away, we can preach with great boldness, and not as Moses did, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites could not see the glory fade away. Not only Moses' face was veiled, but his people's minds and understanding were veiled and blinded too. This veil of misunderstanding can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today, when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are blind and they think that obeying the Ten Commandments is the way to be saved. 
But whenever anyone turns to the Lord from his sins, then the veil is taken away. The Lord is the Spirit who gives them life. And where he is, there is freedom from trying to be saved by keeping the laws of God. But we Christians have no veil over our faces. We can be mirrors that brightly reflect the glory of the Lord. And as the Spirit of the Lord works within us, we become more and more like him. We are mirrors. That's it. That is the missing ingredient in most of our churches. That is the missing element in much of our preaching. That is what is missing in many church members' lives. Christ is the light of the world. We are the mirrors. We have to, all we have to do is to focus on Jesus and reflect that light. What is the purpose of the church? To reflect the glory of Christ our Lord. Get that purpose clear and things have a way of falling into place. Miss the purpose and many good things may be done, but the radiance will be missing. Paul develops this focus on Christ to its horizons and also speaks of our human limitations in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 3. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. Verse 5. This reflection in a mirror is not perfect, as Paul explains in verse 7. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. In other words, we have not perfect instruments for transmitting divine light to the world. But we do not have to be perfect. We just need to reflect God's glory. There is still darkness in those who convey the light of Christ, but they should not be inhibiting, it should not be an inhibiting factor in letting the light of God shine through us. Our lights are little compared to the light of Moses and Jesus, but there is no reason to hide the light under a bushel basket. The container for this treasure of splendor is frail flesh. But that doesn't matter. We do not focus on the pottery holding this treasure, but on the treasure itself. Jesus is the light. Since Jesus Christ has come and since he is the light which enlightens every person, we can reflect that light like a mirror. The light of Christ lightens the darkness of this world. In him was life. And life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. John 1, 4-5. This light changes everyone it touches. Therefore, we are called to reflect this light as God's transformed people. John puts it this way in chapter 1, verses 9-12. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Let me put it another way. We Christians have been given a gift of light to see beyond what we behold. We have glimpses of the kingdom of God. Those glimpses need to be shared. And we read in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, 
but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And then uh, put it another way in Paul's words in Romans 12 too, We do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Transform people. That is what is needed for our day. Transform people who let their light shine until the second coming of Christ. Radiant smiles and glowing reports of what God has done in Christ and continues to do in the Holy Spirit. That is what transformed Christian people need to share. Thus, sharing with others the best preview of the coming attraction of God's reign. Let me say it one last time, this time through two children's stories and a children's song. A little girl who loved her grandmother very much and saw the light in, of Christ in what her grandmother did and said, Grandma must sleep in heaven with the Lord because she is so happy at breakfast. Danny, a 12-year-old paper boy, was delivering papers one day when the man at the door said, I do not want a paper. I do not need a paper. My wife is dying of cancer. The man slammed the door in Danny's face as Danny said, Would you like my minister to call? Danny, a confirmation student, told the minister about what happened. There isn't much we can do, the minister said. Minister, would you go and see him, Danny asked directly. The minister agreed to try. All that week, the busy minister put off making the call, but he knew that he had to face Danny at confirmation class the next week. Finally, the minister visited the home. Your paper boy Danny told me your wife has cancer, the minister said to the man at the door. I'm here to offer help. I'm an Anglican minister. The man at the door looked angry. I don't know what an Anglican is, and I don't know what a minister is, he said. He started to slam the door. The minister put his calling card in the man's hand, saying, call me if you need me. Some weeks later, the phone rang. We'd like to come to your home, the man said. If you are a friend of Danny's, maybe you can help. The woman was dying of cancer. She was hooked up to an oxygen machine. The atmosphere in the house was bleak. I've never seen the inside of a church, she said. But I've heard a rumour that you Christians take bread and wine and believe that God is present. I need God's presence. Can you help me? Soon thereafter, Danny's minister baptised the woman and gave her the bread and the wine of presence. The whole room was lit up by the smile on the woman's face. All this happened because of a boy named Danny and his little light. The children's song says it beautifully. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it, your light, shine till Jesus comes. Jesus is coming in his what is called the last days so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2. In the meantime, the time between the creation and the second coming of Christ, we have previews of coming attractions, one of which is that we know enough of Christ and what he does for people, 
that we let this little shine light of mine shine until the end, when, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's pray. Loving God, we're timid. We find it hard to express the faith that the, we, we have and the, the, the joy that we have in knowing Jesus and the way Jesus looks after us and cares for us. But Lord, it's so important that we share that richness, that grace that we have with others. Give us the courage to let this little light of ours shine so that others may see and come to believe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.